Okay. Hi. This may or may not be interesting. I wasn't going to make a video. I was going to actually rehouse some snails today uh, that I got last week from Ants on a Rock. I'm going to use this uh, old tank that I made quite a while back. Uh, it's just a wooden frame tank with perspex screwed to it and uh, a little door which I put in last night which uh, is a magnet door. So this is, uh, you know, I've got magnets. I'm going to tap this up and make this into a temporary home. That was Leon on Discord pinging me. And I'll leave this in the video. <laughs> I'll make this a temporary home for the snails I've got right now. Um, and I'm going to be putting four or five different species in there. So if you can be bothered to watch it, carry on. But I'm, I'll show you some snails in a bit. Like I said, these are a few different species of snails here. Uh, there's some English native ones and there's uh, African land snails. So, unfortunately I don't know the species of the African land snail. I just know it's one of them, named Akatina Akatina. What I'm going to do is, uh, this is just basic soil, this is just standard compost. I'm going to stick some uh, sphagnum moss in here, break it up, and uh, just keep some moisture in really for the snails. And that's all I'm going to use for substrate. There's a better look at this tank. You can see it's got a, a temperature gauge. Let's move this light. I really wasn't set up for filming this. I just thought, what the hell? Um, that's just cocoa fiber in the bottom there. It's nothing desperate, nothing terrible. But yeah, it's all clean. It's got a little top, no top. Um, I'm going to be putting a mesh top on there uh, to make give me some breathing space, etc. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to do this, mix this, throw it in there. Uh, I've got some uh, bark and some uh, wood with moss on that I've had for years. And I'm going to bang them in there and see what we can make out of this little snail enclosure, which is completely temporary until I get something uh, bigger for them for now. But I haven't got anything available and I don't like putting them in boxes like this <laughs> and hiding them away. I want them in something I can see. So I'm, I'm going to probably uh, make them a tank let me just whip over here. Here's one I made, which is the moment housing Protophasma shultai, if you can see them. There's millions of them in there. Uh, they'll probably go in a, end up in a tank like that, only shorter because they don't need the height. And say hello to our team is here. Oh, you can't see her, but she's laying an ooth on the top after me giving her a nice big unstairer to lay on. She's laying an ooth on the mesh lid. But anyway, oh, have a look at this girl. This is a letter pronotum, Rombadera. She shed to adult last night, as you can see the shed there, possibly. There's a better picture of her, isn't it? Let's see if I can get this damn thing to... No, it's not having it. She's not stuck in that, she's just uh, hanging onto it and it's shaking around. I wish I could get her out there actually, but I can't now for a couple of days. She'll be able to leave them for a few days. So anyway, I'm going to get back onto that. I'm going to uh, mix this, throw it in here, uh, and I'll possibly just leave the camera on behind me and uh, see what happens. If you want to watch it, watch it. If you don't, don't. See you in a bit. It's a crap. I'll trust anything sharp. So. The little tiny sticks that come in with the, uh, the compost have to go. The snail bodies are rather delicate, especially at the age of these snails, which is pretty young. I'll get rid of this crap. Yeah, happy with that. Okay. So I'm just going to pop that in here. I only got one magnet on here, unfortunately. I ran out of magnets when I was making this. So just pop this over here. Probably can't see that. I'm going to show you closer. I've done. What I'm going to do, I guess I've got moss here as well. 
and it's where the wood is at the bottom. And I cover it up because the the native snails, the Helixus person, if you want their proper name, uh, do like to climb up on the plastic around, go higher, and when they drown, sometimes they simply fall off. So I don't want them hitting the wood frame and cracking their shells because that's a pain. So what I do now is I'm going to get uh, my bits and pieces that I've got soaking and uh, throw them in there and try and make it look like these bits. Look at these. Look at this back. Give me that light. This back. Awesome. Look at that. I've had that for a couple of years. Look at that. Beautiful. Still. Some nice wood there that's uh, Isopods would like, I think. But I've got quite a lot of bits and pieces here. I'm going to be adding moss in the bottom as well, just in case they do fall off the top. They've got something squishy to land on. So, what I'm thinking of doing is getting these and making a false back with them, like sort of interweaving them and putting them together like that. It doesn't really matter, as I say, it's this is not for aesthetic, this is temporary. So I'm going to bang them in there now. Let's move this bloody light. For some strange reason, I don't get any light in here. Which is not usually a problem, because I'm not usually filming. Yeah, shame that's not going to go all the way to the top. But, well, that's a nice big piece. Yeah, I think we'll save that. Can we do anything with these sticks? I've actually got a mantis that is inbound at the moment. So I'm going to stick her in here as well. She's already laid one. So she can go in here and keep these guys company. She doesn't bother the snails. So the mantis and snails are okay together, or they appear to be. And uh, you certainly make sure there's no evil flies or anything hanging around. Yeah, I think we'll put that there. Because again, snails like to hide. So they love going behind there. It's great for them. At least the, uh, the British native ones will. It's a nice mossy chunk. I'm gonna put that there as another safeguard against whacking on the wood. This wood's really, really soft. If I put, if I squish this, it literally would fall apart. It's it's perfect for ice box. But I'm gonna keep it in here. I'm just gonna wedge that there just to keep that in. That's all I got for um, bits of back. That's all I've got with me. Let me get this camera. That's all I've got with me for bits of back. It doesn't it doesn't actually look too bad. Let me. Wow, this is shaky cam. Okay. So it doesn't actually look too bad. Uh, let me see if I can get a better pick. Yeah, that's better down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some moss in there on the ground. As I said, so if they fall off, you've got something springy to land on. And uh, I used to have some in here for a couple of years. So I know it's perfectly fine for them. But we've got to stick some calcium in there as well. And that's uh, that's something you really, really need for snails. Now I'll put this camera back. I'm going to go and get some moss. See you in a minute. Right, I've just been out in a t-shirt, in a cold. It's bloody freezing. But I found some hypnum moss. I'm going to shove that in there. It's just, as you see, it's soaking. It's been soaking outside in... A moss bucket, or one of them. I keep, I cultivate the moss in uh, the tub, so I just have my substrate in, basically with a clear lid. And uh, I have some that are soaking. 
but they're constantly submerged. And this is one of them. Now I hope I got enough. I couldn't see very well outside and uh, it was cold when I couldn't wait to get back in. So there we go. Anyway, that will do, I think. And I'm covered in crap, but that will do. And it should be pretty safe there from any accidents. And what I am going to put in is a bit of cuttlefish shell because snails love cuttlefish. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove that down the side here. And I'm going to crawl on that and uh, eat it. And they use their radula to scrape the bone. They do it on stones in the wild, if you're wondering. And limestone, etc., and get the calcium out. But they uh, scrape along with all that radula, and you can see where it's. Wait a minute. Hopefully, you can see. Now, I'm going to come in here now. Can you see this? Let me attempt. Oh, it's dark over there. Why is it dark in that corner? Uh, you'll see where they've scraped it. With their teeth. It's actually a tongue with teeth on it. And that's where they've scraped off the calcium. And they use that -da, for their shell. It should be good. So now it's time to meet the snails. Unfortunately, I've got them in one of these. Don't worry, not for long. They've been in here for an hour or so. And here we have, whoa, look at that. You see that? There's two baby African land snails. All right, cheeky, cheeky snail there. The garlic snail. Well, I'll pop these guys in here. I'm gonna twist because they're on plastic, so not too bad. This one's thinking about coming out. You gonna come out? You Bill or Ben? You call these Bill and Ben? If you're as old as me, you know why. Now this little guy's come out. Very, very, very difficult to pick up. It's really tiny. I'll put you there, mate. And we have some others. This is Helixasperson, one of my favorite snails of all time. He is. Let's see. I'm behind the camera here, so forgive me. This is the offspring of a snail we had for a long, long time. We released most of his babies. At one point we had too many snails. Yeah, other species. There's no point in saying them. I'll show them you after. Here's another one. You may think I put a lot in here for the size of the container, but I'm actually not. And they will, as I say, be rehoused. This guy seems to want me to eat this carb. Let's make sure there's nobody else in here. I don't think so, but I'm not going to throw it all away yet. Now, got some plastic plants here that I'm going to clean and uh, we'll see if we can make that look any better. Well, I just see myself in the mirror. So I hope you can't see me on camera because I look terrible. So I'm just going to stick these in here just to make it aesthetically pleasing or more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it's not for that. It's this, as I say, it's just a purely temporary enclosure for these guys but I don't put this on my desk anyway because I like to see my critters and speaking of critters oh somebody's took a hitchhike and this I believe I need a macro lens but this little guy 
is where are you oh you can't see him what a shame this little guy i've found is a flat millipede what is doing awake i do not know but there he is now i'll put him in there and i'll put him on my millipede sorry i did yeah let's stick these here just for the fun of it i'll leave the middle part because i'm going to uh that's where I'm going to put the food. Will that go in there? Sure it will. And that is my little snail tank for now. Which is perfectly adequate for both 22. It's basically summer for Alexis Burson and the other British native snails. And it's a cool day in Africa for those guys. So, all good. Let's pop this back over here. Shaky cam! Let's pop this. You get your face out of there, mate. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know what we're going to do? We're going to keep you. Even though everything's sucking wet. Give you a quick spray. Make sure you're all wet. Double shake and balancing the stand and this guy and this guy and not to mention this guy. The British native snails seem to be much happier to come out to play in the daytime with the light on them. Whereas the gals, they like to come out at night. I've noticed this when I turn the light out. They come out quite a lot. And also the gals don't tend to climb the sides like these guys who do. Look at them. We're expecting some babies soon of these. Or some eggs at least. Anyway. Those are my snails. I'm going to finish this tank now. Let's get this door shut up before Grace here runs away and yes I do give them old names and yes when you handle a snail it's always best if your hand is wet and not too bad here because everything's wet and I'm going to break down in a second but if you keep your hand nice and wet I hope you can see him lovely snail that one beautiful Beautiful. Let's put you back in there. I'm going to feed you in a bit. But not quite yet. What I'm going to do on the top, this is an old piece of mesh that I had before. Let's shut this door, make sure nobody gets out. And then uh, all I'm going to do, if I can find them, up oh, I'll the fruit flies. Is put some drawing pins or thumbtacks, as you call it in America. And I'm going to stick some on the top here because these guys don't get out anyway. And there we have a snail tank, which is going to go by the side of one of the PCs. In fact, I think I'll put it between the two PCs there and uh, we get to see them. I'm just gonna stick some more of these in because I am putting a mantis in here as well. I'll show you her in a minute. There's Nadal. She does leave the snails on her own, although she does spend a lot of time staring at them. I don't think she can figure out what they are. Wow. This wood's tough, and I know what you're thinking, I've made it out of wood. But, this wood has been soaked and stained in a waterproof uh, coating. And uh, it seems to be okay because it's years old, so there we go. Now I'm going to put that on the desk there, but first I think I will show you. And where's she gone? There she is. 
I'll show you. The girl that's going in it, she's a tiny adult African. And she's going to be going in there. Uh, if I could get a focus on her. Lovely, isn't she? She's already laid me a new. And this is where it's going. Pride and place between that PC, this PC, and I'll be able to look at that all day long if I want to. So, not bad. I'm quite happy with that. Nice little environment for them. For now. So we get something bigger for the land snails. And I've just got to catch that mantis and pop that in there as well. Be right back. And this girl is going to be living in there to lay a roof. But during the day she pretty much stays out. I just don't want to leave her out because right above her, if you can see that, is this guy. He's quite big. He's hanging on that plant there, so he's, he's just literally above her. So I don't want to leave them out. She did already lay me an egg sack or a thicker, which is there. And it's hard to believe that that came out of her in one go. And it's actually huge. So it's a bit of luck she'll lay another one. How pretty is she? And that's about it, really. So, if you liked it, give us a like, leave a comment, moan, subscribe, don't care. I'll leave it with you to decide. I'll see you next time. Tomorrow, Mantis Monday, and we're going to be doing the Cryptic Mantis, I think. Because I only have one, and he's molted to male a few weeks back, and I think it's a good idea to get that video done now while he's still with us and uh, we'll go from there so thanks for watching if you did make it all this way really thanks for watching i'll see you again next time bye bye